Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. And today, I got a really interesting BMW for you. This was suggested to me a few weeks ago in the comment section by one of my viewers. So this review is dedicated to you, Gladzio2887, and it's also going to be a video about once affordable, now hard to find, 118 Motor Maxes. If that's even a word. Brief history about this car, this BMW, which is an M3, is the E92, the successor of the E46, and is part of the 3 Series that consisted of the E90 four-door sedan, the E92 coupe, and the E93 Estate, or Touring, as BMW likes to call their station wagons. Now, the E90 sedan came out in 2005, the E92 coupe came out in 2006, but the M3 Coupe only came out in 2007, and this car was made until 2013. What makes this car unique is that the E92 was BMW's last 3 Series Coupe. The generation that came after this had its coupes moved to a different series of their own, the 4 Series. 118 BMW model cars, as you know, especially the fully opening ones, are harder to find than fully opening Mercedes, which Norev's conveyor belts keep churning out year after year in every possible color. Fully opening BMWs, on the other hand, have been associated with brands like Mini Champs, Kyosho, and Paragon, and they don't make them anymore. There's been a couple of Maestos and Solido BMWs here and there. As for KK and Norev, they've only made sealed ones. Motormax, however, also made a couple of 118 BMWs in the past. They made Chris Bangle's pre-facelift E65 7 series, which I loathe. They also made the Z4 and X5, but Brago has made better versions of those. And then they made this E92, which looks really good. And the only other manufacturer I know of that made the E92 is Kyosho, but <laughs> good luck finding that one. It's like 300 euros today. This, on the other hand, was sold for Maisto price. I bought this back in 2017 and I paid 30 euros for this. And it all started when I came across a picture on the internet, namely this one. And I was like, wait a sec, is that a Motormax? With such a nice interior? I have to get it then. Motormax made this M3 in several different colors. They made it in black, in white, red, in an anthracite onyx kind of color, and in this metallic blue. Now I personally think that it looks good in every one of those colors, but the anthracite version is probably the most unique color for this model. However, while I was about to purchase this car a few years ago, I was aware of a potential problem that needed to be addressed before deciding for a color. You see, many Motormax models, both in 118 and 124, suffer from a problem that I like to call inferior windshield quality. Motormax used to put front and rear windshields on their cars that had a slight blue tint, which made them look milky and not as clear as even other budget brands like Burago and Maisto. However, it seems that at some point during production, they upgraded to a better quality material, and their windshields stopped being milky. But when buying online, you don't know whether you will get a Motormax from the old batch or from a new batch. So always plan for the worst, and so I did, and I thought that milky windshields would stand out and look particularly bad on the black M3, so I didn't get it. The same on the anthracite one. 
blue tint doesn't look good there either. Then I spent a long time deciding on whether I should get the red one or the blue one. And ultimately I thought that blue tinted windshields would blend in better on the blue one than on the red one. So I ended up buying this version. But it turns out this one doesn't have milky windshields at all. So if the windshields looked this clear on all other versions, I probably would have gone for the anthracite instead. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this model. So taking a look at the front of the E92 BMW M3, you can see that the front is, of course, at the end of the day, a Motormax, so the proportions are not going to be perfectly aligned. And especially towards the right of the model, you can see that there is a little bit of a panel gap where the headlights aren't perfectly sitting properly. But you only notice this if you look at the car from exactly this angle, which normally you don't. Otherwise, I would say that the front end looks good because we've got uh, nice headlights which don't have any pegs on them. And they even have like a silver trim for the edge of the LEDs. German license plate says MKK4523. And of course, we have a slightly embossed BMW logo on the hood. But what's perhaps most impressive about the front is that the kidney grills are perforated. Under the flash, you will see that this grill is perforated. I mean, that is so cool. This is a Motormax and not a Kyosho, but the kidney grill is perforated. The headlamp bulbs also reflect nicely when exposed to direct light. But on the other hand, the flash also makes you realize the air intakes underneath don't even have a proper mesh, like the one in the middle is just a transparent plastic with a mesh print on it, and the ones flanking it are just black plastic with no pattern at all. And moving up, you can see that the hood has a little scoop bump sort of on it because the v8 engine is so big that it won't fit under the hood but for that you do get like these two vents over here and they have a little bit of a pattern on them and moving up you can also see how the mirrors are attached with two stocks instead of one which i think is also unique for the bmw e92 now, at first glance, it looks like there's just one windshield wiper and the other one has broken off, but that's not the case. It is just partially hidden under the hood, as you can see here. BMW later started hiding windshield wipers behind the hood on purpose. Now let's check out the hood. So let me just open this. And I have to hold it open because if I don't, it's going to not stay open this high as it's supposed to be. Um, what we have inside is a V8. In fact, this is the only M3 generation that was powered by a V8 engine, because most of the other generations had inline six engines. And this engine is the BMW S65, a naturally aspirated four liter V8 that produces 414 horsepower at 8,300 RPM this thing had 80 more horsepower than the E46 M3, and the successor of this car, the F32 M4, only has 11 more horsepower. Now, at first glance, that plating actually looks like it reads BMW, but like upside down, but it doesn't. It's actually MV8, so it is correct. But this car suffers from low torque, so you really got to take it out on the Autobahn to get your money's worth out of that V8. And 0 to 100 kph acceleration takes 4.6 seconds, which is not that fast, even though it has the M badging. Moving over to the side of the E92, there is really not much to say. I mean, all BMWs basically look the same from the side. Um, you can see that the silver wheels contrast with the blue pretty nicely, and you also get this blade here at the side which covers a little vent however it doesn't say m3 on it now let's take a look at the wheels i'd say motormax's wheels are pretty impressive actually because we get 
brake calipers and brake discs with perforations on them and the disc even moves through the calipers so this is very impressive for Motormax. Um, you can see that we have the BMW logo on the rim surrounded by five lug nuts so all the details are there and I'm not sure but these are probably either 19 inch or 20 inch wheels so there's definitely a sporty element to them and they look good. One of the features of the E92 M3 is that it comes with a carbon fiber roof to reduce weight. And I think that Motormax did a fairly solid job in replicating this carbon fiber, especially for the budget standard. Um, you can see that the weave looks pretty decent enough because, I mean, it's not really a carbon fiber pattern. It's more like a repeating pattern. But if you compare this with some of the later carbon fiber iterations done by Solido and stuff where it was just sticky and then it would like get the marks off the tape that would cover the doors then this dry version is just a much better solution and I think it looks good. The only thing I don't like about this car is that this front panel and this back panel are made out of plastic while the rest of the car is made out of metal. And taking a look at the back of the 118 E92 M3 by Motormax, you can see that the back is also done pretty well, in certain areas better than expected, because if you look at these taillights, there are no pegs on them, which is surprising for a 118 Motormax, and puts this almost at the same quality as Welly, Norev, and maybe even early Kyosho. What's also nice is that the red taillights stand out a bit more here on the blue one than they would have on the red one. Got the German license plate in the middle again, and on top of it we have the BMW logo and the M3 logo to the right. At the bottom we have quad exhausts, and once again that plastic piece with the mesh sort of printed on it. As we move up, you can see that we also have a third brake light here, which is a bit hard to see, but it's there. But now for the best part of the car, its interior. Let's first start off with the door sill branding. I mean, look at this. It even has the sill branding with the M3 plates on it, just like the Kyosho. As for the door card, which is also done really nicely. You can see we have a stereo, door handle, and then some storage bins at the bottom, and this nice uh, tan trim, which continues on into the interior. And the interior is really where the highlight of this Motormax is, because, I mean, look at this detail level. This is pretty insane. But here's the best part. The seats are not only tan colored, but they even have stitching. Like, not just the printed on stitching you get with some Solitos or Burago signatures, but indentations extending along the side bolstering all the way up to the headrests. We've got an armrest in between the front seats. I drive dial next to it. The back seats on this M3 have nice detailing as well. They've even replicated the rear console with the three storage bins and rear belt buckles. But just look at that center console. Stickered infotainment screen with air vents below it. Got your two climate control knobs. Labeled, of course. Why do we need a Kyosho again? Because look at this. Even the radio station presets are numbered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's even some kind of button next to the turn signal stock. Gear shift. And we have the carbon fiber pattern on the dashboard too. But it gets better. Motormax even gave us an overhead console with the garage door controls and everything although they drilled holes into the sun visors to mount the windshield. We get grab handles, and even an overhead console for the rear passengers. 
So a full headliner, basically. Just amazing. And now let's check out the driver's side of the E92. And the driver's side looks just as great as in that picture I had seen online that led me to buy this car. There's so much detail here. Steering wheel has the BMW logo on it, three spokes and buttons on each side. Behind it we have a sticker for the speedometer and rev meter. There's even a button to the left of the turn signal stock. And now if we take a look at the footwell, floor pedals are there, but not painted, just like on the real E92 M3. Even the back of the steering wheel is not just a smooth ring of plastic like you would expect on a Motormax, but is grooved. And the three traction control buttons to the left of the shift stick are also modeled. So yeah, I mean, it's just a great interior. And taking a look at the bottom of the car, um, you can see that it says 118 BMW M3 used under license, Motormax. Pretty good underside detail. You even got like some heat shielding, but it is not painted, unfortunately. Only the exhaust tips are. Tires have some nice tread on them. Worth mentioning is that the rear suspension also affects the entire rear axle. So I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the 118 BMW E92 M3 by Motormax. It's a little harder to find and more expensive today than it was a couple of years ago, but still, I mean, you can like get this compared to the Kyosho one, which you either have to have purchased 10 years ago or pay more than $300 today. So if you're interested in more BMWs, um, be sure to check out some of these other reviews that I have made. And I'll see you guys there. Take care. Have a wonderful day. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.